Hey, how's it going? So last summer I did some road trips and some camping trips on my Royal Enfield and the bag setup I had on it wasn't very good. It was kind of a pain in the butt to kind of take everything off, put everything on. It would take like 20 minutes, half an hour to do it. So I went and I bought some new bags and panniers and new racks and I've been wanting to try them out but then the winter came and it's been kind of cold and rainy here in Vegas. But now you can see I'm all geared up. I got the bike all set up with all the bags and I'm gonna do a quick uh, one night camping trip just to test it out. If things go good, then I'll probably do a longer camping trip uh, next weekend. So as I was saying, uh, last summer I did a couple camping trips. Uh, I did a short one to this area where I'm gonna go now and then I also did a long 1500 mile nine day trip where I rode from Las Vegas all the way down to uh, Southern California. I went to Laguna Hills, then up to Redondo Beach, and then up to uh, Morrow Bay, Monterey, and uh, Big Sur. And the bag setup I had on it, uh, the, the side panniers were the same, except they were throwover bags. So then I threw them over, and then I just strapped everything else down with bungee cords, and it was kind of a pain in the butt. To take the bags off, put them on, unpack, it was just, it would take me probably 20, 30 minutes to get everything packed up, everything strapped down nice and tight and secure. So I was looking for a better setup. And so I found these, uh, I think it's called Hepco and Bauer. I might have the name wrong, I'll have to check. Uh, and they have these, what they call SIBO racks. And so it's just like a C shape and you can mount them to the sides, just to the two bolts in the Royal Enfield where you mount the uh, rear rack. And so with just those two bolts, you can put on the rack. And then for the pannier bags, what I did is you can buy the bags with the mounting bracket or you can just buy the bracket itself. So I just bought the bracket and stuck them on my cheap set of uh, panniers uh, to buy bags from them. They're just ridiculously expensive. I mean, you're looking at seven, $800 for a set of bags. So my $50 bags, and I just put the uh, mounting brackets on those bags. And what I like about that is if I get nicer bags or a different set, I can just either buy more brackets so I can have multiple sets or just swap out the brackets that I have onto it. And then I bought another big bag. It's the Rhino something. I don't remember the name, but it's the one that's sitting on the rack just right behind me, the tail rack. And it's just four straps and they just clip right in. So it should be a lot easier uh, oh, I mean, already the bags sit nicer on the bike. When they were throwover, they tend to sag a bit. And uh, I actually burnt a hole in the bottom of one of the bags because it sagged down onto the exhaust. So with these new bags, I just haven't had a chance to try them out. I mean, in Vegas, you know, when you think of Las Vegas, you usually think of just blistering heat, 110 degrees dry. But the winters are actually pretty cool. It's usually 50s during the day down to the uh, 30s, 40s at night. And so far this year, it's just been a lot of rain, just unusually rainy. So today is pretty much my first chance to really get out. So I, this is my first time using the bags, packing everything up. And so I just want to do a quick one night trip about an hour away from my house. It's already pretty late. It's uh, 4.30, I think sunset's at 5.30. So I'll probably just be getting to the area where I'm just gonna camp right around sunset. Uh, no target shooting. See, I had to put that sign up here. I was driving through here once and people were standing right in the side of the road shooting guns, just target practice right there against the rocks. I was like, yeah, you guys are crazy. But you'll see cars all the time just all parked up along the street because people just hang out. Like I said, shoot guns, drinking, just trash everywhere. I was driving down the road. I saw someone, people right outside that car having sex. <laughs> so welcome to Vegas, huh? This little section right here, it would be nice, but people just, they just don't take care of it. But that's the uh, French Bend Mountain right there. Over on the left side is Sunrise. And there's all kinds of hiking trails all around here. But the, uh, the trailhead for this mountain, Frenchman Mountain, is where these cars are on my right. And then you can see the beginning of the trails. 
right over there. Now this corner here, it's tempting to want to come through here and just take it really fast. But what you can't see is the road is just really bumpy right here. It would be so easy just to bounce and lose traction coming around the corner. And so we just drove through the mountain pass and it just opens up right here and it's just beautiful. Uh, it just gets nicer and nicer as we go along. And this takes you into the Lake Mead uh, recreation area. So you do have to buy a pass to get in. Uh, just because I live 15 minutes away, I buy the annual pass. So it's 80 bucks for an annual pass. And that annual pass is good for all the national parks throughout the United States. Let's see if the fee station is open. At a certain time they close and then there's just nobody there and you drive through and it's sort of the honor system. So yeah, it's just the honor system. You're supposed to pay at some point, or I don't know how it works. Especially if you're just driving through at night and leaving before they open in the morning. So coming up here, you can go left or right. We'll be taking a left. If you go right, it takes you down uh, along the west side of Lake Mead. And there's a few uh, there's a few viewpoints along that way that you can stop and it's pretty nice. And eventually it takes you over to either Boulder City or to the Hoover Dam. We're gonna be going this way up till Cabo Bay, Echo Bay, Overton Beach. And this takes you along kind of the north part of the north side of Lake Mead. We can get a little bit of a glimpse of it and then head towards Valley of Fire. Where we're camping is just past the Valley of Fire entrance. But tomorrow, I'm kind of under the gun right now. You can see the sun is uh, getting low in the sky. Like I said, sunset is at 5.30, I think, and I'm scheduled to get there at 5.40, so after sunset. There's a few places that are pretty neat to stop and check out, really nice. There's this rest area up here that's just all surrounded by all these red rocks, and it's really nice. So tomorrow, when I leave the campsite in the morning, I'll stop and hit a few of those areas. Uh, you can see Lake Mead off in the distance over there. But I love riding through this Lake Mead recreational area. The roads here are just so fun to ride. Coming up right here is that rest area that I was talking about where it's just in the middle of all these red rocks and there's some hiking trails starting from this area. Uh, I've never actually done any of them but I'd like to someday soon but I don't have a whole lot of time but I'll just take a quick ride through the parking lot. Check it out. But tomorrow I can stop maybe do a little walk through. But it's the Redstone Picnic Area. And it's just all these beautiful red rock formations. <coughs> hey, this little, little elephant rock. It's 
the baby elephant to the one over in Valley of Fire. Alright, so what time is it? It is 5.11, saying I'll be there at 5.37, and as I mentioned, I think sunset is at 5.30, so we should get there right in a few minutes after sunset. Hopefully I'll be able to find a good camping spot. I'm not sure how busy it is this time of year. I know to camp in Valley of Fire is absolutely beautiful. I've done it before. But you have to reserve spots and all spots are sold out for the next like month and a half. So nothing was available for tonight. But should be to the campsite in about 25 minutes. So this right here is the entrance or exit, I guess you could say, to the Lake Mead Recreation Area. And right there, if you take that left, that road takes you to the entrance of Valley of Fire. This is the east entrance. Uh, most people that visit Valley of Fire come in through the west entrance because they're coming in not through Lake Mead, but through, uh, but from uh, the interstate from the uh, I-15. So from Vegas, you just hop on the highway north and it's only about 45 minutes from, uh, from the Las Vegas Strip. Our campsite, you can see we're just right there. So it's saying four minutes to the campsite. people camping out there. It's pretty busy. So let's see what we can find. Sandline River. Wow, a lot of people out here. A lot busier than last time I was here. A big group of people there. Look at their side by sides. Spots over there, and right by the power lines. But there's some people way out there. Oh, just right over here. They're on a spot for a tent over there already. Well, this is nice. Someone cleared out a spot for a tent already. So I won't have to do it on top of all the rocks. But that was a good ride, a nice quick ride. I just love that road coming in through uh, Lake Mead. It's just absolutely gorgeous ride and the roads are just perfect for a motorcycle but the bag setup worked really nice so now I'm just gonna unpack set up the tent So just got my camp all set up just as the sun went down. Now I'm not sure if you can see it, but the moon is coming up over there. Big, full, bright yellow moon. 
got my tent all set up here. Get my bags in the tent. Have my tent caught. I actually brought two sleeping bags just in case it gets too cold tonight. And then my little chair set up. And for dinner tonight, since this was a last minute decision to come camping, I didn't get any food. So just a couple slices of leftover pizza. Good morning. So I slept pretty well last night. Made myself my morning coffee. The sun is just coming up. So I am just gonna drink my coffee, get packed up, and then head on back out. Probably make a few stops along the way, along Lake Mead, and then head on home. Now this cot is the best thing that I've bought to go camping. It just makes sleeping so comfortable and it breaks down nice and small to be able to fit easily on the bike super lightweight you need to get one of these if you want to have a comfortable night's sleep camping so normally this helmet's pretty easy to put on but i put on this like wind neck thing here that stretches and just that little bit of extra makes this helmet almost impossible to fit over my fat noggin. So it was a beautiful night camping last night. Got a little chilly. Got down to about mid 40s. It was 44 degrees when I got up this morning at 6 a.m but that turned out to be a good spot. I liked it that someone had already cleared it of all the rocks so I could just put my tent down right there. So for my bags, my new bag setup, I love it. It made it a whole lot easier, quicker. I'm really digging the new bag setup. So I, I'd have to say this was a pretty successful test. So right now I'm just gonna head down. I'll drive around Lake Mead. I'll stop at a few of the, uh, the viewpoints of the lake. But a lot of people come out here. A lot of people have ATV, recreational vehicles. But it's a nice free place where you can camp. You can camp, I think, up to 14 or 15 days. Now, over that direction, that goes into, you can see where the red rocks are. So that heads into the Valley of Fire. Uh, I'll take a ride up here some other time, go into the Valley of Fire. It's absolutely beautiful. I imagine this weekend will probably be a busy weekend, though since it's a nice day, people looking to get in there. And there is a $10 entry fee for the park. I think it's 15 if you're not a Nevada resident. I'm just gonna stop right here real quick and put on some full finger gloves. My fingers are getting a little chilly this morning. I love the feature of this new uh, Insta360 Ace Pro with this watch. And with it, you can see when you're recording, you can, start, you can control the camera, start and stop recording, and also you get a preview of what you're looking at. So when you're wearing it on your helmet, it makes it a lot easier because you can't usually see the screen to see where your camera is pointing. There we go. Downside of these, this doesn't work on touchscreen, but it doesn't really matter since I'm not using my phone right now. See a little bit of Lake Mead. 
off in the distance there. With the rain we've been having, water levels have risen, but they're still extremely low. I think they're still considered at emergency levels. That's that rest area again. Beautiful. I'm not going to stop this time though. I'll come back another time and uh, do some exploring in that area. Ride up, hike around. A lot of times when you come up here on the weekends, you'll find wedding parties and Instagrammers all set up with photographers and lights. And been there before where they have makeup artists and, and wardrobe personnel doing dress changes, costume changes, doing it for the gram. Coming right through the pass here again between uh, Frenchman Mountain on my left and over Sunrise on the right. And this is where you can get a pretty good view of uh, the Las Vegas Strip. Right now it's the north side. You can see the stratosphere, the strat as they call it now. And that's downtown Las Vegas right there. The old part of Vegas, Fremont Street. And uh, you can see the snow-capped mountains off in the distance. You can see the Vegas skyline right there. Just above that building right there, that's downtown Las Vegas. And you can see the snow in the mountains. You can see from over this side. Let's see if I can pull off the side here. Get a better view of the whole city. At night it looks pretty good because it's all lit up. You can see the sphere right there. Downtown Las Vegas and all the way over to Mount Charleston. 